find enough momentum to bring themselves back in the game. And now going into game number four, they have to find a way to tie it up or they're out. It all comes back for me to game number two. Yeah. That was really the one. You, you have your opponent down two keeps, and they were not able to secure the win there. Hurts. If Diamond Skin takes the 2-0, I don't think there's a chance that Team Liquid bounces back in this. Just from a psychological aspect, sure. that would be unlikely. But right now, Team Liquid, of course, is on top of the world. They lose the first map. It looks bad on map number two. They turn it around, and now they're in the lead. One more map. And of course, the big question is, what is the next map going to be, and who takes first pick in the series? Well, Caldor will jump into that soon. First, we have a couple of tweets to check out here from our audience at home, supporting the HCC and constantly dropping in their thoughts. Go, go, boys! All of the players here, Nurok, Hoslovs, <laughs> Sport, Billy, Splendor, Eternal, Liquid Zeus, Heroes Esports, TLN, hashtag HCC. Thank you for the cheering. I'm sure they appreciate it. I saw the tweet and immediately thought, okay, how is he going to deal with this? This is why we love HCC. What a turnaround. GG at Team Liquid. Definitely true. Great turnaround in game number two in particular, but also how they presented themselves on the third map. So, Liquid again. They already won three match matches, little, three matches this season. Now they're aiming for the third. Words hard, man. StarCraft fans, they make us nervous. Yeah. I'll be honest with you, man. You guys are so good at your game. It's ridiculous. We're going to get ready for game number four as we choose the battleground. Now, typically for those wondering at home, how is the battleground chosen? It's very, very uh, similar to other esports as well. But what we do here is the losing team gets to pick if they want to have first pick or if they want to have the battleground. They can choose that, and the opposing team that did win gets the other option set up. So the teams are currently figuring out what they want to do here with the diamond skin losing out in the match. They need to decide if they want to go to a battleground and have a prepared cheese maybe available, want to go to a standard map if they feel like they can take on Team Liquid in a standard gameplay, or if they just want first pick here to get some of the best heroes you can get in the roster. Now, the interesting part is that Diamond Skin has played three different maps throughout all the games that they played so far. They always choose Tomb. Mm -hmm. They already did that in Lost there, and uh, we also have them with um, Infernal. The third map that they've taken so far is Cursed. Well, let's find out where That's we're going. Not, yeah, we're not going to Cursed. That's just not happening. You're not, you're not picking Cursed against Liquid. And they aren't. So going to BOE. They're adding a new one. They're going to BOE this time. I would have been very, very surprised if we would have seen them go to Curse. That sounds a little bit too... That's just, that's, that's just asking for trouble. I mean, it would have piqued my interest, that's for sure. <laughs> they would have felt confident and would have had you, a different you strategy. Say, you can say that, piqued my interest. Well, BOE is a bit different from other maps. Typically, in uh, a lot of the maps that you have, you have three lanes. This one has two lanes and major fighting in the middle of the battleground over immortal phases. And if you're able to beat the opposing immortal, he will push the lane for you and beat down on forts keeps and eventually the core. So we'll see how our teams manage to pull that off here. And this is actually a battleground where you see a lot of different strategies. You may get double support picked in here and lately double tank. And it's also a map where Liquid only played one game so far and they actually lost that. So the last time they weren't successful here. So maybe one of the reasons why we have the Battlefield of Eternity chosen as our next map by Diamond Skin. But it's a very brawly map, a very team fight heavy map and that's where Diamond Skin has to excel and show that they can force Team Liquid into the third map and the final map of the series. Now I'm very curious to see what we're going to be getting from Dark Mock. The hero that he's been showcasing lately, and he's been playing pretty well on. It's just a matter of the teamwork just being a bit off between all of the members. And while we have Diamond Skin showing up today, my question is whether or not they can match the macro of Team Liquid deciding when to go for the Immortal and when to play defensive. Because decision making is imperative on this battleground. You either win the Immortal phase or you fall behind. I'm very curious and interested to see how Diamond Skin is going to draft here. Because I'm personally not quite sure what to expect from them. Sure. And we have seen the play with especially global pressure more so from Team Liquid than from them. So the Haka could be a potential ban here. I would say the early bans are probably going to hover around the standard. I would expect NG and Abatha to be banned out. Especially Abatha banned against Team Liquid would make sense for me. But after that... The Haka is definitely someone where I would say, okay, you might get, want to get rid of him. So there's a couple of aspects to it. And I really don't know what to expect from Diamond Skin because they presented themselves a lot more, very differently today, a yeah. lot more aggressive than they did last week. I'm curious about Tychus. Tychus has been showing up in a lot of our matches today. Will we get him on BOE? Odin, again, is still a powerful tool, both around the Immortal phase and pushing in, but you do lack out that DPS damage you want to have for the Immortal phase. So does he fall off in the draft here? Is he big enough for both these teams to be considered in the uh, five heroes you want to select? We'll find out. He wouldn't be my go-to. I would definitely start with Immortal Pressure first, and that's where, of course, Greymane pops up again. So in this setup, 
I would say. Oh, they ban Abatha. I expected the Genji ban on their end and them aiming for Abatha instead. Okay, so Liquid bans out Abatha from Diamond Skin. We can traditionally expect the Genji ban at this point. Actually, to be honest, Diamond Skin is one of the teams that didn't have to ban out Genji so far in the series because Team Liquid always has done it for them. Team Liquid banned Genji three times, no matter if they were first pick or second pick. So right now the question is, does Diamond Skin respect Genji enough to ban him out here or is there another hero that they're really worried about when they go up against Team Liquid? I kind of feel like Genji's also fallen off a little bit on this battleground. Maybe Team Liquid's okay with it seeping through. But Diamond Skin's not going to give an option. Genji, banned out here for Diamond Skin. Yeah, and Genji is just one of those heroes that is super interesting to me, just simply because he doesn't really see a lot of play. He's been played in Europe in 10% of the games because he's banned out in 86%. He's nearly banned... Uh, yeah, he's basically banned in every single game. So it's pretty crazy. And then with our first pick here. Poor Cyber Ninja. Not getting to play here ever. Almost in Stitch's territory with not being able to play ever in the matches. Uther being picked up for Team Liquid, and they are really prioritizing that hero. A couple of clutch saves, though, from Splendor, and you can see why they're showing him. Bringing in that armor, helping out against the burst that has been pretty prevalent when it comes to Diamond Skin. They have been looking for targets and trying to blow them up, and Uther is just great at stopping that with the cleanse, and of course the armor he provides on the heals. Uther is 10 and 4 in Europe right now, 10 wins, 4 losses, and he is 6 and 0 for Team Liquid. They haven't lost the game with Uther yet. So I don't blame him for prioritizing Uther. So you're saying the series is done? I think that Diamond Skin wants an opportunity to change that and uh, deliver the first loss nice to PR Team Liquid. So, yeah. you. You're growing as a commentator. Look at that. <laughs> you came back with the PR response and everything. I'm so proud of you, Kaldor. Wow. Kaldor's so positive in 2018. Look at that. Okay, I, I need to get my edge lot in. <laughs> Genji and Han or ETC and Hanzo picked up here for Diamond. You have a bad influence on me. No, no, man. But you've had a bad influence on me too. I've been, I've been edgy here and there. Bring in the the hate lord sometimes. In my world, that's a good influence. I keep you honest. Bouncing each other out. Yin and Yang. Uh, Hanzo and ETC are a deadly combination. Mm -hmm. Do we get? Stage dive here. We've seen it a couple times I mean, actually. First of all, we need to get Greymane now, right? Yeah. Uther Greymane? No. Li Ming instead. Greymane not taken on Battlefield of Eternity until the second ban phase. Team Liquid's not believing the hype. And also Muradin with I mean Muradin was even banned out earlier, or taken away because they don't want Team Liquid to get the hero. Liquid has I mean, they play a lot of Muradin, but it's not really something where I would say, okay, this is uh, the game changer. Sure. This is the one thing where where they win the game straight out against you. So that high priority against Muradin, if you still have so many tanks around, is interesting to say the least. I would really have expected them to go for Greymane early on with Uther to capitalize on the Divine Shield. Muradin is still strong. They want Li Ming for the resets, but that gives Diamond Skin an opportunity to go into Greymane themselves if Team Liquid doesn't ban them. Well, Muradin still brings that flexibility, which is great on this battleground. Knowing that you can send a tank over to the opposing side, delay, try and stop them from uh, winning the Immortal Race, and then have him still get out thanks to how survivable he is. So I don't mind the pickup from them. Greymane actually may be banned out by Diamond Skin themselves. Yeah. Okay, they get rid of him. Greymane is the hero that has the most play rate in Europe by far. He's very rarely banned, usually because he's an early pick usually picked on the first or second position. Very flexible hero, but not quite as oppressive as Genji, for example. So, yeah, gets banned out in the second rotation. Team Liquid, let's find out what they are going to get rid of. They could still target supports, and they do. They ban out Malfurion. Does Diamond Skin want Tracer here? What do you combo her with, though? That's the question. Normally, we see her comboed with Malfurion right now. Uh -huh. You could think about it, though. You could even think about some kind of double support setup. Well, that's the way the, the draft is reading to me. With Greyman being banned out, Greyman's one of the best heroes that you can actually have against a Tracer, being able to dive forward, go for the throat, and the Malfurion pairs well. So Malfurion getting banned out, Team Liquid maybe sniffing that out a little bit here, and now suddenly Diamond Skins, oh, snap, our draft strategy is kind of falling apart a little bit, and that'd be why they're taking a bit to pick here. Yeah, the damage dealer is... Gul'dan is also around. I mean... Gul'dan is still one, you have the wave player, you have the poke, the horrify can create a couple of opportunities. Wouldn't necessarily go for him. I expected them to head for Greymane instead. But they can still run a Tracer comp, they can also go double support still. So we have seen True. double support. Double support has fallen off on most maps, but if there is a map where we still see some, it's Battlefield of Eternity. And they go for Lunara. 
Arthas Lenara coming in hot. Lenara takes a little bit of time to develop, but Hanzo helps out with the poke too. So Lunara can of course capitalize then with unfair advantage on Arthur's Frozen Tempest and Slow. And Arthur's ETC is just fantastic. It's mm. insanely strong. And I really want to see how Team Liquid is going to deal with this because right now they don't really have that tool. And we are coming back to Tychus. In this setup, I can see Tychus way more for Team Liquid now just because it helps you to chunk these tanks down. And you have two of them at the opponent's front line already. And you have a grenade for ETC. Interrupt him. Tyka seems like one of the go-tos right away. Granted, you still have Lee Ming, so maybe they think yep. they might not need it, but you just want to make sure that front line is not able to be as effective as you would think. I'm still considering if Tracer might be an option for Team Liquid here, if there is any kind of double support setup that they would be comfortable with running here, not having a second front liner, but they still need their, their support, sorry, their solo laner. So yeah, Martial for the solo lane, and we have Tyka as expected. That makes sense. So now we need a support for Diamond Skin. It's going to be Lucio. Coming in hot. This could be the last map, depending on how it goes. So right now, both of them with a solid draft. Both have poke on the Immortal. It's a little bit slower than I would normally like for BOE, but they're yeah. fine to each other. And of course, the double front line set up here for Diamond Skin. Diamond Scene has really played well. I like their coordination that they showcased on uh, the last few maps. Even the ones that they lost, they had really good picks when they isolated targets. And they did well better this week than they did last week. So the setup that they're running here allows them to do that again. You have ETC for the initial slide. You have Arthas for the lockdown with the Howling Blast. It's just very poke heavy damage on Lunara. But Hanzo can capitalize on it with an ult. So overall, I like what they have. And a thought process behind all of this is, of course, again, to uh, work against Uther. Yep. Uther's weakness is that he is bad at AoE heal. He's uh, worse than other healers. He's much better at that burst heal and also the Divine Shield keeps someone alive. Lunara can really play around him a bit. Last time a team tried that against Team Liquid, it didn't work out, but here it might be a different. It was still a close match, that's for yes. sure. Let's get ready for game number four. Team Liquid has a chance to seize the entire match and get a win with a 3-1. to one. But Diamond Skin are hoping to tie it up. Diamond Skin is behind in the best of five series. They're currently down one a game. And of course, they want to force Liquid into the fifth. We have them to the left with Robadoba, the Australian player on ETC. Wolf John Lucio, Nanda on Arthurs. We're seeing Lunara played by Darkmork and Rossmate playing Hanzo. On the right side in the red, Team Liquid. A third will play in the Malfiel. Gonna have Nurok on Lee Ming, Splendor on Uther, Sport Billy on Muradin, and Hasuabs will be showing off Tychus. All right, let's see how much Diamond Skin can do this time. Already Malthiel up at the top. He can be that strong hero in that late game, and he's definitely going to create the space for the two damage dealers. Having the Divine Shield with Malthiel when he uses Tormented Souls is always great. Can Lunara maybe outpoke him here a bit? That's the most important thing to watch out for. And I feel then we're talking again immediately about Leeming. If she gets a good flank with a nice combo against Lunara, that might be all that they need here to get the early lead in the reset. Nurok, very good at those flanks. We see him do it pretty often here. Darkmont steps forward and puts some damage on top of Hasuobs, using that range to his advantage and staying away from Nurok at the same time. The four-man, it should be a bit difficult for them to get kills here, but if Diamond Skin finds an opportunity to move in, Lucio will allow for them to kind of run over their opponents, so they have to watch out for that. Team Liquid will play safe. The interesting part uh, for me is that if you look at Team Liquid's games before today's series, they lost only two maps, and those were the two maps where they played Li Ming. They played Leaving twice and they lost both games with her. Those were the only maps they lost. So, not sure if that is necessarily any indication. On the other hand, they won every single game that they played with Uther so far, sitting at a 6-0. and zero. But one of those two statistics is definitely, or one of those two series is going to end today. Dang, man. You're putting Leaving against Uther. <laughs> just, like, just like that. Let's see if Uther's OP is strong enough to make up for Li Ming's. I mean, Li Ming's is struggling. I'm not sure what I'm saying there. Both of them are actually extremely good. Well, Team Liquid gets a storm ball on Wolf Joe. He's able to sneak out. But you can see the fear. Team Liquid playing safe here. Don't want to take too much poke damage. Don't want to put too much stress on top of Splendor here. And they're gonna instead going to have a couple of members run to the top. Diamond Skin goes in for a power slide and jumps on a Thernal. Nande comes in with a Howling Blast, but a Thernal 
dodges it. Yeah, it only gets out here. And you know, it's interesting because we always talk about how Gul'dan currently is the leading mage in Europe. And if not for the losses that Team Liquid has with Li Ming, it would be the other way around. Because overall in Europe, we are seeing Li Ming sitting at six wins and five losses. If those two losses on the side of Team Liquid wouldn't have happened, Li Ming would have a win ratio way above 80% right now and would be one of the most sought out majors. But Team Liquid just didn't have the success with her yet, so that could change here. Diamond Skin certainly wants to make sure that's not the case. And they, I love this tank heavy setup that they have. Arthur's and HTC together are just so formidable when it comes down to locking down a target and allowing the team to get the damage in. The only problem that Diamond Skin has is that most of the damage that they have with Nara is damage over time. So Hansa is yeah. the one that has to deliver there. Diamond Skin, if they're able to get to late game on this battleground, which is one of the hardest battlegrounds to get to, they will be deadly between Lenara's level 16, Arthas with the Lucio and ETC. They'll be nice and healthy right away. They'll have their own self-sustain. And of course, the heroics coming in will make it much easier for Diamond Skin to have those sustained team fights. But it's all about the first immortal phase. Can they get on even footing or even win here? Yeah, and we have the first Immortals coming in. Both of the teams again with their camp taken to the top lane, Malthiel versus Arthas, as we already have Couple of members here in the middle trying to get the first damage in against the Immortal on our two lane map. And up here, Eternal still starting to just poke a bit and get the extra experience and maybe pressure the structures themselves. Sport Billy gets knocked into a stun. Well played there by Robodoba. Able to jump away though. Sport Billy didn't panic at all. Saves his jump just for the right time. Gets over the wall and it's healed. But yep. good defense there from Diamond Skin. He has to go back and tap, and that was definitely a heavy hit that he suffered. The important part was also that Diamond Skin didn't overchase. I really like that. Lunara knew when to turn around, did not go into D because that could have turned around against her really quickly. Arthur's at the top is taking some pressure off Malthiel. Malthiel is doing a really good job, and you can always see at the hit point bar of Arthur's that he's starting to struggle a bit whenever he moves out of the tower range. Naturally gonna struggle there. Malthiel just great against high health point. Tanks. Team Liquid bring a few members over here for defense while Li Ming has to defend the bottom lane. With Lenar being there, they're not in too much of a rush to run over to the Immortal. At some point, you can start to bring Malfield down. He's helpful against the Immortal phase as well. But that level 7, a little more important for both of our teams. Yeah, both of them are really patient with the objective. They just want to get the extra talent and move in with it. And actually, the pressure play at the top lane just continues as Team Liquid is starting to put heroes up against Nanda. And he lost both of the towers already. So Liquid doing well on lane and gets the early level 7. Stun comes out from Slender. Count to kite backwards. And Team Liquid finds some damage on the Immortal. If Stormbolt comes out, we'll hit Robodoba. Knockback from Wolf Joe. Gets a third all back and away. And Arthas is going to start rotating down. So Team Liquid realizing he's missing from the top lane, backs away. Can they keep Sport Billy alive? Yes, Quick they do. Lens. And again, Dimog a bit too far out. He did have no chance, in my opinion, to get the kill alone. He needed someone else to be with him. So he eats the entire Li Ming combo, and that really chunks his hit points down. Arthas is starting to move in now. So with Robodoba and Nanda on ETC and Arthas being both around, they can really go for these long lockdowns where the rest of the damage healers can capitalize and maybe get that kill in. Narok survives on the side, almost getting caught there, but escapes just barely. Malfil getting the uh, better trade in the top lane. And the moment Arthas shows up, expect the same maneuver from Team Liquid. They are drawing Arthas away from the fight, and the moment that Arthas stays a little bit too far and he has to defend a minion wave, they pull back. Nande. Taking some damage though, the Thurtle goes in for the block. Oswalt goes in, puts some damage on top of him. Icebound Fortitude used it just to survive. Yeah, and a good job by Wolf Joe as well, speeding him out there. The problem is that Diamond Skin is really losing ground. They are trying to counter push at the bot lane, and now they're going for the Immortal, but they are starting to take a lot of damage on the fort up at the top. Nice stun into stun attempt, but Robot Doba is able to move away. The halftime show in favor of Diamond Skin should start soon though, if they get a bit more poke. There we have it. Okay. There it is. Halftime show connects. Diamond Skin will have to uh, position aggressively and here to get the poke in. Lunaro is mi missing. Lunaro is actually at the bot lane. Oh. That's one of the main reasons why Liquid and Diamond Skin are still tied in experience. Okay, over here, Nanda. Oh, Eternal! Eternal is in so much trouble here. He gets one heal. Can they get the kill? Oh, they do. They kill against Team Liquid, but Lunara has also fallen. The second kill as Utha dies as well. Hanzo delivering. Nerox can turn around and put some damage on the Immortal Hasselobs as well. They're hoping to get a little bit of a lead here to pull Diamond Skin's attention towards this area. A bit more tense than I was expecting. Nande nice. comes in with a big flank, though. 
and they find a kill. Nande going full boss mode here and comes in with a flank, gets the kill. Hazoops is able to move away though. Clutch escape by him and also Muradin. And this should be the opportunity for Diamond Skin to get the Immortal. We still have the stun circles on the ground. Robadoba could push them back once again. And that should be enough for them to win it. Nod's working on it. Yep, it's looking like it's going to be a win here for Diamond Skin. So Diamond Skin, all said and done, fall behind the top lane, but they get a few kills, grab an experience lead, and get the Immortal. And they have a very nice experience lead because it's coincident, uh, coincidentally, it's exactly with the push. So they will hit 10 through the wave, especially if they send Arthur's bottom, and then they can dive behind the fort with the level 10. All they need is a tower or another wave. 10 just hits right here with the turret. Team Liquid playing safe behind their walls. Wall of Thernal on the bottom side of the mouthfield is going to work on that mini and wave. And now you die ten. hard. Arthas, Arthas already found out on the other hand. Needs to be a bit careful here, but he's trying to lock them down. They're diving deep for it. They want to go for Hasselhoff. They're going in immediately, and they get him. The Mosh is trapping two more, and Sport Billy jumps out, but Splendor, he doesn't have the mobility. And that's another double kill for Diamond Skin. Five kills against one. The Immortal easily moves through the fort at the top, and they can rotate down to the bot lane where they are attempting to even catch Eternal. Diamond Skin making progress on the map. A Thornal dodges oh. out on the Thornwood nice. vines that would have demounted him and gotten him slowed, so he will survive. Sport Billy comes down and defend the fort, and the Immortal is cleaned up. So Team Liquid, they take some heavy losses there, but they're still in the game, and they have their own heroics. Yeah, but they lost a fair amount of ground here. They lost a fort, they lost another fountain. They are still behind, so it was overall a great start into this fourth map by Diamond Skin exactly what they need here. They can carry that momentum a bit that would really work in their favor and potentially lead to a fifth game between the two teams. And whatever I expected coming in today, I did not expect that we could see a fifth game between the two. Not with how dominant Liquid looked last week and how much Diamond Skin struggled, but they are looking really different, much, much stronger now. Hazops chunked low already. Here comes the Divine Shield. Malthiel, though, with a tormented soul. Sport Billy jumping after him. In comes Roba Doba, and the kill against Lee Ming. Sport Billy also blocked. He doesn't have the jump. Sound Barrier comes out, and they easily pick up two more kills and drop the fort. Diamond Skin completely kite Team Liquid there. Hosselops couldn't do anything as Tigus in the background. He was too low. He got junked. So that was a 4v5 with Malfield being the frontliner for the damage. The turnaround on top of Li Ming allows Diamond Skin to break down the fort, and they control the map completely. Again, Team Liquid hasn't lost a single game with Uther yet. They're 6 and 0 with him. If they lose here, that would be their first loss with an Uther composition. In this case, they are banking their hopes highly on Divine Shield and Malthiel, and he had an impact in the last fight, but it just never lasted. You could actually see that Lucio was holding back his sound barrier even throughout the Tormented Soul. And normally, the thought process of sound barrier is that you want to use it when Malthiel engages with the Tormented Soul, since basically the two heroic abilities, at least to an extent, counteract each other. Diamond Skin gonna have 13, and the second Immortal phase comes online here. Diamond Skin looking for more fights here. Remember, the longer we go in a late game here, the better for that Lenara. Being able to grab her level 13, her level 16, very important power spikes, more damage, more range. Effective against Team Liquid 2 with that Uther floating around. And Team Liquid just hoping to get some silk on the side, and they're playing major defense. Yeah, Diamond Skin just needs to take 13 now, and then make that play for the Immortal. Play it safe until then. I'm actually, okay, there we have it. Arthurs could have stayed around a little bit longer at the bot lane, didn't do that. Lunara not going for the uh, unfair advantage. Instead, it's the spell shield that she aims for against Li Ming. Absolutely understandable. But now there's the talent advantage. And this is the moment where Diamond Skin has to say, okay, now we need to be aggressive. Now we need to use that advantage and get a lead. And they're already trying to look for a potential flank with Nanda. Lunara defends the top lane. Nobody defending the bot lane yet, where there's a camp from Diamond Skin still pushing through. But Malthiel is finally making his way over. And that's at the time when Lunara is already making her way in. And here comes the arrow. Howling Blast into a Dragon's Arrow, but Sport Billy steps forward and holds that front line for his team. Nande takes a poke on the side here from Hasawabs. And Diamond Skin doesn't really get the fight they want, but they do net a little bit more damage on top of the Immortal while Howling Blast keeps coming out. They could really move forward way more aggressively than they currently do with the level 13 talent advantage and the double tank setup that they have. Not going for the halftime show is already giving them the edge. Both of the damage dealers now at the top lane, very much in a, in a great spot 
great position for them to dish out the damage and make it impossible for Team Liquid to move in against them. And now they can simply race. And it's going to be aggressive positioning here for the Immortal. Team Liquid decides they have to move forward here. They can't give it up. No one's soaking yet here for Team Liquid. They may have to fight at a talent disadvantage. The problem is they can't really wait here because the poke on the side of Diamond Skin is fantastic. And yes, there's also the Ming that can fire around, but someone needs to work on the Immortal of Diamond Skin, and they finally send two over. But that is also an invitation uh, for aggression, and Nanda is trying to look for the Howling Blast. They poke away again. Thornwood Mines and Lunara alone is such a great tool, and then you have Hanzo with a scatter shot too. Support Billy just struggling right now on the Muradin. Third one should be keying in pretty soon here. He has to back up, though, just to get it to proc, and that allows for Diamond Skin to move on in, and they win the second Immortal of the game. And it's a big one. They're looking at 70% shields. Keep wall, keeps up for grabs. Team Liquid decides it's time to fight. They hit level 13 and they move on in. Divine Shield is available and so is oh my Souls. Sport Billy is getting chunked. Oh, the arrow! arrow against three. Great play. Divine Shield and Tormented Souls immediately being used. Team Liquid is trying to turn the fight around, going in with Odin as well, trying to get a kill. The sound barrier getting popped by Lucio. And in the meantime, the Immortal moves through the bot lane. Great arrow being used here. A lot of ults exchanged, a lot of resources used. No kills yet as we have Diamond Skin moving through the bot lane, trying to make their way through. And there is nothing really left on the side of Team Liquid. Diamond Skin still has Mosh Pit available. And Nande made a lovely move there. He chased Odin back to the top side using Howling Blast, everything he could here to make the duration expire on the Odin phase and make defense harder for Team Liquid. Roba. Team Liquid has to do what they can here on the side. They're poking where they can. Roba Doba nearly falling here, but he's still fine. Sport Billy, low, very low, needs to be careful, needs to jump out. Doesn't have the cooldown ready apparently, but gets the heal from Uta. And this is going to be a keep, 100%. The keep is going to go down question is, can they get more? It's unlikely, it's early in the game, but they're still trying to see if they can get a kill and then go for the game. Robodoba has a mosh of it, up and available. Team Liquid aware this is playing safe. Do push forward a little bit here. The Immortal being the mage point that they have to turn around and put some damage on. There they go, they finally get it cleared up. And Team Liquid still in this game, but Diamond Skin is running away with it. Seven kills against one, and yeah, Diamond Skin is playing this so well. And Uther is really struggling with all that damage output that we're seeing from Lunara and all that poison that comes through here. Also, Malthiel didn't really have the expected value just yet with that Divine Shield. And the big problem is you use Divine Shield, you use Torment and Souls, and all that Diamond Skin has to do is drop Sound Barrier. So you, ex you always trade down if you use them. And now they are trying to utilize again the advantage they have here. Odin being popped, no talent advantage, none in a bit of trouble. Good engage originally against Tigers, but this fight isn't over just yet. Once again, inevitable end being used by Malthiel as they are trying to move in. Marsh comes through, Malthiel is down, sound barrier is popped. Sport Billy Low jumps out, he's no chance of escaping here. He will fall, so will Splendor, it's a triple. Hasselhoff working on the auto attacks on the side. Nande is able to back up. Nurok and Hasselhoff the only two to stand here for Team Liquid. Nurok might fall too. Whoop Joe goes in for the engage. Decides to pull away with Splinter bringing out the last second heal. Can two members of Team Liquid stop the push here from Diamond Skin? The answer is yes, but the Immortal phase is right around the corner. They're not going for core. They don't want to risk it. They could, they, the death timers are so low that they don't want to risk it. They have 16. This is safe. They're playing it very safe. They open the gate, and if they can take now the fountain down as well, there is no retreat for Liquid. Liquid will not be able to move back and top their hit point and mana pools off during the fight over the Immortals now. They take the camp away as well, putting the pressure onto the top lane. Liquid will have to spend precious seconds to defend against it, whereas we already have Diamond Skin in position to poke away against the Immortal. And this is one that Team Liquid can not lose. Team Liquid does catch a break, though, with the Immortal spawn. They're in a position where they can defend against their opponents, but they have to be careful. Again, the poke has been an issue, and it continues to be one. More poke on the side as Robodoba steps up forward to allow for his team to start working on the Immortal. The heavy front line on Diamond Skin is working out right now. They are blocking everything, and they are making sure that their two damage shields are getting everything in. Again, Sport Billy from the side is trying to get the Storm Ball in, misses it, and this is the halftime show already. And Liquid is scrambling. They need 16. They want 16. They have the heroes on the top, on the bot lane, trying to get the experience. They need the talents, but this is the moment that Diamond Skin chooses to go for Malthion. They're trying to move in here and drop him down. They go for the isolation kill. Here comes the immediate Divine Shield, but still, Tychus is missing, finally coming in, but the kill against ETC before Tychus even has an impact on the fight. Oh, but Doba missing the power slide. 
slide, and that allowed for Team Liquid to turn around and get the engage. Malfiel helping out with the percent damage, and Lee Ming with the big mirror ball helping out with Cannoneer, too. This is going to allow for Team Liquid to be in a 5v4 scenario. They turn around and go straight for the Immortal. All right, this might have just changed the game. 16 ready for Liquid. Heroics all used. Everything's on cooldown. They're trying to go for Arthas. If they can get Arthas as well, the staggered death would be a dream, and they get it. They get the staggered death, but they lose at the same time now, Tychus. So it will be a four versus four in just a few seconds. Nurok is low. If Nurok falls now too, that could be the end for them. Lunara barely getting away, but ETC is back to business. Nurok just barely having some health here on the <laughs> side. Gets a heal from Splendor. Malfiel is on top of the Immortal on the bottom side. Arthas not here for 28 seconds. Botlane. Remember, there is no well for the the taps and Nurk has to come in here low on health. Bot lane, two catapults already, and a third one coming in. They will have to defend the core eventually, and that's the time that Diamond Skin uses now. They're starting to move in. They have the advantage. They're going for the Immortal. Liquid is desperately there. They're scrambling. They're trying to defend it somehow, but the catapults are homing in on the core. Li Ming is moving to the top right now, not even defending as Team Liquid is starting to lose their shields on the core itself. Tigers it. is going in. Four billions low and low, half percent right now. Eternal will have an ult in 10 seconds. That's when he wants to go for the engage. Robodoba is the target. Nurok goes in, putting everything he can in ETC. Sound barrier pop. Team Liquid needs to escape and reassess. Arthas is moving back in, and so is Tychus. Tychus defended for a second against the catapults, but now he's going back in. It's a five versus five. Nice push. They're going for Spot Billy. Spot Billy is low. Malthale using his ult. The Divine Shield is in. He's trying to get the value. Sound barrier was already used earlier. Can't be used to counteract it, but Eternal doesn't get the value and now diamond skin is sitting at 17 versus 17 but they are so close to winning the immortal that could decide the game that probably will decide the game and they get it the immortal grabbed here by diamond skin a big shield available for them there are some tools here for team look good for defense but they have to have a miraculous team fight odin is the only heroic up for 60 seconds mouthy will not have to warrant its souls and we will not have a divine shield for oh Uther. my god no Hazu off. Hazu no. Hazu gets caught and dies. That was the only defense. is down, and all of a sudden, this is getting from bad to worse. We have them moving in. Another slide, a kill. Muradin is dead. Eternal falls. This is game. No way for Team Liquid to defend it. Not against the Immortal, not against the Catapults, not in a 5 versus 2 situation. Diamond Skin moves forward and they do the impossible here. They tie up the series against Team Liquid. Not winning a single series or a match before this weekend and now they're able to get two wins against Team Liquid and they have a chance to take the entire series as we move to a game number 5. Absolutely insane. They take it. Diamond skin force game number five. And now just imagine.